Welcome to today's installment of Joe with Joe, and we're going to be talking about the wonderful world of data. Data driven marketing works. Um, is everybody using it? I think we're getting there. Certainly, I think, uh, you know, as compared to three or four years ago, where you really did have a cadre of marketers who uh, thought data was. Um, that's actually bad, right? It was all about the art, it was all about the creativity. I think now, you know, sort of across the board, people feel uh, quite consistently that, of course, data is uh, an integral part of, um, of the marketing uh, equation. And uh, without it, how do you make a good decision? Without it, how do you uh, know whether the stuff that you're doing is working and therefore, you know, what to do next? Um, and so I think everybody at this point is, yes, I too am a data driven marketer. Still, a lot of work that we have to do across the board in terms of you know the right tools, the right technology, making sure that we have the right impact, making sure that we're removing friction from the process, um, showing people best practice, uh, tips, tricks, and techniques, uh, all the rest of it. Um, you know, still still a lot to do, but a good sign that the world agrees that everyone is a data driven marketer. Yeah, you know, it's to, I think it's to what end. I mean, you certainly saw that at the you know the beginning where um, you know third-party data marketplaces uh, sort of arose, and you know people were actually quite excited about the fact that they could sort of reach their audiences as defined, right? So I use the you know the Ford auto intenders, right? You know, it's an obvious insight to say, hey, if I'm looking for uh, somebody who's in market for a car. Um, I should, you know, go to a data marketplace and find some bit of third-party data that says in-market auto intenders. So then I think we made the sort of next move to say, no, no, you know, it can't be about uh, the same uh, insight that everyone has. You need to have an orthogonal insight. You need to know something that other people don't, which is really why first-party data, you know, beyond being, quote, free, right, it's the exhaust that you get from having a direct relationship with a, you know, with a consumer. First-party data alone isn't enough, right? There's only so much of it, right? Uh, you've spent a lot of time to acquire those customers. But if you use it as a seed, right? If you use it as the input uh, to a you know a good lookalike, and you say, okay, knowing what my best customer looks like, how do I wrap it with yes, third-party data, right? Preferably with better economics, things like you know firehose relationships as opposed to um, sort of sample uh, page as you go. But then even more importantly, if you know if first-party data is good, uh, what's even better? It's pooled first-party, aka second-party. The next step from there is like, okay, great, the data's there, but like, why? What are you using it for? We tend to go backwards. The whole the whole industry goes backwards, right? It's like um, you know, it starts with media and then becomes audience, and then you know, then you look at the outcomes that sort of get driven. Um, and really, the right way to go is just flip the whole model, right? It's just like you start with outcomes. What are you trying to accomplish? Why are you marketing? What does good look like? What does success look like? How do you measure that, right? Uh, then you say, okay, who? What are the audience characteristics and attributes that uh, you know drive those behaviors, and how do I scale? Uh, those audiences through the you know, through these sort of techniques, and then where do I find them, right? And then can I map it back through to the goals that I said I was trying to accomplish, right? So that sort of closed loop. Let me start with what you're trying to accomplish and kind of work from there.